it's been a little while since I've uh, talked to all of you directly. I've been working very hard on the album. I've got a couple of brand new songs and a few guests that I'm very excited for you to hear. So, though I don't have any new music to share with you this week, I just want to share a couple of thoughts. Things have been so strange and intense for so long now that it feels almost cliche to talk about. Like, you can only hear so many references to our strange and uncertain times before it all starts to feel a little passe, despite the fact that, by any metric, things have only gotten stranger with time. It's a very isolating experience, and I felt my own thoughts kind of ferment, like they're sealed in a jar. And whenever I try to imagine what other people might be thinking, I can't help but wonder how far my impression has drifted since we've become more disconnected. So, I wanted to share a few thoughts sort of to air them out, uh, with no particular theme or order to them, just to give them a little bit of oxygen. And maybe you'll find something that you connect with. I've noticed that social media has a way of flattening information, removing its qualities. Scrolling through Twitter or Facebook, you'll see hundreds of posts in an undifferentiated mess. A wedding photo, a bad joke, breaking news about a massacre, a piece of political commentary, a picture of a big dog. All these are compressed into little rectangles of similar size, given the same treatment. We know that some posts are trivial, and some are important, but nothing about the format will clue you into which is which. They all scroll by just the same. Contrast that with a newspaper, with the big news on the front page, and the funnies toward the back. Or television, which separates the cooking shows, news shows, and dramas into different channels. All these media forms have different ways of sorting and digesting information, tendencies that get imprinted on the audience. These days I'm mostly concerned with social media, because this year especially that's where a lot of people have started spending their time. I've noticed that the more time I spend on social media, the more my thoughts begin to blur, scrolling by without distinction, like a constant news feed. I lose my sense of proportion, my thoughts become a chattering crowd where I can't focus on a single voice before it's lost at sea where as soon as I spot the crest of a wave, it's already pulled into the undertow. This is a very easy way to become overwhelmed. Everyone has problems they have to think through, and one of the most important executive functions is sorting your problems by urgency and importance. What am I going to have for lunch today is a very different question from what am I doing with my life. One question doesn't need to be answered for years, decades, maybe can't even be answered in words. The other question should probably be squared away by noon, give or take a couple hours. When I meet young people around my age, I often feel an immediate sense of kinship no matter how different we may be. I think many of us have a very deep shared experience rooted in our fear of the future. We can sense it in each other very quickly. The ambient fear that one of the darkest chapters of human history is mere decades away is a subtext to just about everything we do. I think this is an especially paralyzing fear for a lot of artists. One of the most noble characteristics of art is that in a world animated by utility and optimization, it has the audacity to be useless. But when the world so desperately needs to be changed, the thought of being useless doesn't sit well with many of us. At the same time, the act of making art resembles something like building another world from scratch. You discover rules unique to your artwork, tendencies and structures that differentiate it from the real world, that make it discreet and autonomous. When I hear people say things like, art can change the world, it feels at the same time incredibly naive and strangely plausible. After all, if new worlds can be imagined and constructed, 
then maybe ours isn't so set in stone. I spent most of my time in college looking for some intersection of music and politics, hoping that with enough digging, I could find some prescriptive method to take that would put my skills toward making a better future. Needless to say, I didn't find anything nearly that satisfying, and mostly got more disillusioned with the impossibility of the prospect. I saw companies like Spotify and Netflix foreclosing the possibility of a more democratic culture, stomping out the livelihoods of any artists living like normal people. I started wondering if art could even survive, or if the regime of big data would render artistic experiences indistinguishable from the gray slurry of information and web content. But throughout this whole desperate search for purpose, I never stopped writing new music. Though I didn't have a compass to follow or a coherent reason to do it, I kept it up because I liked it. And at this point, it's just something that I do. Which is really as close to an answer as I ever got. I had been enmeshing myself in aesthetic arguments from another era, when workers had credible institutions that wielded real political power, and countries around the world were pouring state money into the arts. Since then, most truly democratic institutions have been annihilated, and most arts programs defunded. We're back at square one in a lot of ways. I was banging my head against the wall trying to figure out how to grow healthier leaves on a tree that was raised decades ago, that we have barely begun the project of regrowing. These days, I see the task of artists as more akin to building healthy soil. Those in power may succeed in making our crafts financially non-viable, but I think it's of no small importance that we don't die. <laughs> 